What's your favorite body part to be bitten? Depends on who's doing the biting. Whoever you'd like. All right, because it would be very different if it was my wife or my granddaughter. Let's go with your wife. Make it less weird. Ear. The ear. You. That's personal. Josh! Hey, welcome back to our stupid reaction. It's Corbin. I'm Rick. <laughs> you can follow us on Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Instagram, Twitter for more juicy content. Thanks on Patreon for so the account. Subscribe juicy. if you haven't. Hit the like button. Hit it right in the anus. Patreon's got juicy stuff too. We talk about Instagram and Twitter, but the juiciest stuff is without question on Patreon. The juiciest stuff is in your butthole. Especially for, I mean, really for both, because there's a lot of OSR stuff that never goes anywhere. Ugh, and there's a ton of stuff I don't do on social media anymore, but I do on my Patreon, so that's where this, the juice is. is a, that's where it's dripping out of holes. This is a informational video. This is how the universe was created according to Hinduism. How the universe was created according to Hinduism. Do you, obviously, are you familiar with how the um, Hindus believe the universe was created because i think we've seen stuff with like the multiverse we have we, obviously now with brahma there's a lot of like astra stuff yeah and uh, I, I don't know if that has anything to do with it and if i'm not mistaken there was part of that the story of that um was revealed in a little bit of that was in life of pi visually how then, the universe was created yeah and then there was another one we just saw one where they showed it coming out of the mouth what was that what, what are you maybe it was about? in sacred games Something was coming out of somebody's mouth. Yes, yes. So the universe was formed out of a god's mouth. Or it's you go into the god's mouth. I guess we'll find out. Different, though, in like the Judeo-Christian speaking it into existence. Yeah. Yeah. So it literally came out of something. That's something you remember? Yeah. Like... Oh, I don't remember that. Or, or that the universe was in... Is it, is it in... I guess we'll find the out. The universe is in a god's mouth, is what one of the stories was. Anyway. Let us know if he's right. Mystery that has always puzzled mankind. Not who me. Was it created? And who is responsible for creation? I'm a top bakchan. In Hinduism, there are many theories about how the universe was created in the earlier states. Let's explore some of them. I ran fear. In Hinduism, the universe is not one single entity. There are an infinite number of universes mm -hmm. that yes. are constantly being created know that. and destroyed. In other words, we live in a universe that belongs to a multiverse. Mm -hmm. A universe will ultimately die, but the multiverse lives on. Lord Vishnu Thanks, is Dr. a personification Strange. of this multiverse. According to Hinduism, Lord Vishnu was asleep in the cosmic ocean of all causes before the creation of the universe. His bed is a giant serpent with thousands of cobra-like hoods. The universe was created in a triad of roles. Creator, Maintainer and Destroyer. Lord Vishnu is the Maintainer. Lord Brahma is the Creator. Shiva is the Destroyer. Is the, destroyer. Is the, destroyer. the universe was created through the actions of Lord Vishnu who slept and let a lotus bloom from his navel. The is it a navel? No, that, I've never heard the creation that. ...of the universe, while Brahma is found at the flower center and represents the creator. The time it takes for one universe to be created and the next one to end is also the duration hmm. of one breath of Lord Vishnu. Is that when it? When he exhales, Thousands that of is. Universe come into yes. Being, out of his mouth. A new Brahma is born in each one. I thought you were crazy. But when Lord <laughs> Vishnu inhales, all universes get sucked in and Brahma dies. Hmm. Lord Brahma represents the universe that we live in. He creates all life forms and is responsible for the physical world that we live in. Lord Vishnu is the personification of the eternal multiverse. He is responsible for the continuation of life in all universes. Mm. Brahma is the representation of our temporary physical universe, while Vishnu is the representation of the eternal multiverse that exists forever without any beginning or end. 
The current universe represented by Brahma is not permanent. In fact, it's quite temporary. Brahma only lives for 100 years and then he dies and a new universe will be born. Now, let's talk about time measurements. Brahma lives for 100 years and each year of Brahma Earth years, I assume. 60 days. Okay. And we are currently on the first day of the 51st year of his reign. There are day and night. During the day, Brahma creates life and during the night, all life he created is absorbed back into him. Therefore, we will only be there for this day of Brahma, which is the first day of his 51st year. But don't be sad. Let me promise you that this is quite a long day. Yug Large units of time Think of yug as a unit of time that is I was told there'd be no math. thousands to millions of years. I remember yug from Sacred Games. Yug? Text yeah. Has details about these Pankaj's character talks about that a, a lot. A yug is made up of four sub-yugs that are distributed in the ratio of 4 is to 3, 3 is to 2, 2 is to 1. In a Maha Yuga, the Kali Yuga is the shortest Yuga and lasts for 432,000 solar years. Oh, wow. Followed by the Dwapar Yuga, which is twice as long as 864,000 years. Then there's Trita Yuga at 12,96,000 years. And finally, the Sat Yuga, which is 17,28,000 years. So in all, a Maha Yug on Earth lasts for 4.32 million years. So almost done. Manvantar. The next major unit of time after a Maha Yug in ancient Indian text is called Manvantar. At the beginning of a Manvantar, new life forms are created and at the end of it, those life forms are destroyed. This is how the cycle of life goes on in the ancient Indian texts. One Manvantar is said to last for 71 Maha Yug or 71 multiplied by 4.32 million years. That's a lot of numbers. This works out to be around 306.72 million years in total. According to these ancient texts, all life on Earth will eventually be destroyed after 306.72 million years of evolution. Interestingly, around 252 million years ago, the Earth experienced its largest mass extinction event. Most species on COVID. Earth were killed, including nearly 90% to 96 of all insects. This was also you the bet only roaches mass still extinction survived. period yeah. of insects on Earth. After each mass extinction of life forms, there is a period of recovery called Sandhi Kal. This period lasts for one Satyog or 1.728 million years. According to the latest estimates from modern science, it is believed that it took around 10 million years for life on Earth to recover after the Perimen Triassic extinction event. As you can see, it took our planet 10 million years to get back to its feet after suffering the greatest mass extinction in history. Kalp, day of the Brahma or universe. The universe has a day too. Just like our day on Earth is called Kalp, the time period for one Kalp is said to be equivalent to 14 Manvantars and the Sandhi Kal. So, there are 14 Manvantars and 15 Sandhi Kals A lot of math. Kalp. During the Sandhi Kal before the first Manvantar, no life has evolved yet. So, one Kal equal to 14 multiplied by 306.72 million years plus 15 multiplied by 1.728 million years. Should keep up with that math. No. <laughs> equal to 4.3 I didn't know there'd be so much math. On the universal scale, one day is said to be 4.32 billion years long. This day is divided into a period of creation where life forms are created and a night period during which no creation takes place. Each of these periods is also 4.32 billion years long. In other words, 
One day of Lord Brahma on the universal scale is 8.64 billion years long. It's a long day. It's interesting to note that according to modern scientific discoveries, the oldest life form on the earth is 4.28 billion years old. Mahakalp, Kalp, a unit at universal scale is further extended with days and years similar on earth so that a month at the universal scale is 30 kalp that is 30 universal days and a year at the universal scale is 12 I am such universal long months. gone lost this enables life forms to rise and fall in accordance with the karma they have earned on the universal scale 100 years are defined as the lifespan of a universe this is called a Mahakalp. A universe is said to end at the end of its I'm glad uh, Brahmastra didn't have all these numbers so or I would have been way lost. <laughs> Me too. The entire universe is 8.64 multiplied by 30 yes. multiplied by 12 <laughs> multiplied by yeah, 100 that's correct. years. <laughs> that's correct. Which totals to around 311.04 trillion years. Are we sure it isn't point oh three? <laughs> That I mean, the universe is currently on the first day of its. But I'm making fun. We just, I, I did not know there'd be the thousand percent math. No, and I, I genuinely. That's my first question: is are we? How do we get to the certainty of the numbers? To the calculation once again, according to ancient Indian texts, the age of the universe is 50 universal years plus. Like it specifies. Dang. Plus seven sandhi kal. Plus of course. Mahayuk, okay, doing the math in my head. <laughs> universal years equal to 8.64 multiplied by 30 multiplied by 12 <laughs> multiplied by 15 billion years equal I can't. to 155,000. That's what. That's the number I got. 20 billion years. Six months. <laughs> Six multiplied by 306.7. Enough with the math. Equal to. I just wanted the information. Million years. Seven Can Indians keep up with as much math? Holy cow. Well, who's the best in math in the world? That's true. <laughs> Who invented zero? Yeah. That's why Hinduism hasn't taken off in the United States. <laughs> We're too dumb. We are not. We do much better with God said, and it was seven days. <laughs> and if you don't believe me, you're not 6,000 years old. <laughs> So, the age of okay. the universe, yes. as per ancient Hindu text, okay, let me is see if 1,957.9 9 trillion, trillion years. years. <laughs> I thought the same. Modern science <laughs> tells us that the universe is around 13.799 billion years old. Okay. However, ancient Indian texts predict a much longer timeline. Ancient Indian texts says that... Does it actually say in the ancient Indian text? 311 trillion years. This video is only an attempt to appreciate the great scale of time on which ancient Indians were working. We do not come across any other ancient civilizations that talk in terms of billions or trillions of years of calculation. That's pretty cool though. With specific names. Especially if like given to the ones back in the day we're actually talking about. Like the famous American cosmologist Carl Sagan said in his book Cosmos, the Hindu religion is the only one of the world's great faiths dedicated to the idea that the cosmos itself undergoes an immense, indeed an infinite, number of deaths and rebirths. Mm. It is the only religion in which the time scales correspond to those of modern scientific cosmology. Its cycles run from our ordinary day and night to a day and night of Brahma, 8.64 billion years long, longer than the age of the earth or the sun and about half the time since the Big Bang. Thank you so much guys for watching this video. If you like... So, I didn't understand any of the math. So yeah, I'm not going yeah. <laughs> to touch that. I literally, yeah. You could have said any numbers and I was like, okay, cool. <laughs> I, I did not keep up with the numbers. <laughs> I can't. My brain is too dumb for that. Uh, nope. But I'm surprised that you got. I, I thought you were just crazy about yeah, the about things coming mouth. out of his mouth. Yeah, I no. thought you were just crazy. <laughs> like, <laughs> you just remember you're you're thinking about a different mouth there, Rick. Uh, <laughs> but apparently you were correct. Yeah. Um, 
if if the ancient texts actually talk about all those numbers, that's pretty crazy. Well, I'm, I'm sure it does. Number one, and number two, what I appreciate is the fact that it does. I, I've always had a hard time with human beings doing everything they can to make the incomprehensible comprehensible. Uh, it should be incomprehensible. Not to me. Yeah, I mean it. The the the. We cannot comprehend the infinite. We just can't. I can. The closest we can come to comprehending the infinite is a number line. That's it. Other than that... What about a dance line? No, that, that's finite. That's okay. finite. Number lines are infinite. That's why when somebody say they can't... They don't... Like I have people throughout my life, especially when I was pastoring, talk about the fact that how can God always be? He says, well, numbers always are. You don't... You don't there's, there's, I don't have any problem at all with something always, having an eternity in its existence because there's eternal negativity on a number line and there's eternal positivity on a number line that has no end and nothing repeats. Um, but that's my favorite thing about this is the incomprehensibility of it. Especially, and especially all those numbers. I Ooh. also love the, the, the prospect of, of it being it, not just infinite in its scale of time measurement, but infinite in its term of, I mean, they didn't get in, involved into this aspect of it but we're just talking about the physical realm mm -hmm. we're not even talking about the invisible realm yeah, yeah, and yeah. and like 75 percent, i think it is of the known universe is upheld by dark matter which we just assume is there based on the results we see of it mm. we can't really measure it so it, it's that was yeah but when you came down to the specifics of this times this times this the only class i ever failed in my life was algebra when, when it comes to numbers like that my brain goes <laughs> And sex ed. You failed that one, too. Uh, we didn't have sex ed when I was a kid. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We didn't, you didn't need to teach it and in Drani school. And Johnny just said, that explains a lot. Yeah. Uh, anyways. <laughs> didn't, didn't need to teach it in school when I was a kid because we had parents who did that it's really well. You? What? what are you talking no, about? No, my dad, my, my dad mom and dad, my mom and dad taught me very healthily and well how to appreciate human beings as sexual beings. Ew. Uh, <laughs> you can teach, you can, well, that's one of my favorite things was to know that my kids were having a healthy sex life. I want my kids to... Go back to the numbers. I want to hear more about the numbers. Enjoy the fullest extent of experience in life. I hope all of my kids are experiencing the greatest orgasms known to man. And if that makes you feel weird, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry why you wouldn't want the best for your kids. I just don't want to hear you talk about it. You weirdo. I, you don't like my orgasms? No. Johnny just said, neither does she, because they're gross. Anyways, let us know more videos we can react to if there's informational. Less math, though, please. Yeah, uh, not as much math. I can't, uh, I can't do that much math. Here in the West, seven days, 6,000 years, and he spoke. That's all we need. That's all we need. There's billions. There's too many billions. No, too many billions, too many commas, too many... Yokes. I, I can't do it. Not enough. Too much yokes. Uh, so yeah, let us know other uh, informational videos we can react to down below. <laughs>